So Colleen, Hi. you know, I was reading on Reddit, and I want you to confirm this. I was reading, a fan said that you went to your panel at the Daphne Festival or something like that? Daphne Festival, I've yeah. never been to that con. Never been back home? <laughs> well, Daphne Festival? It's like yeah. a Scooby-Doo. What's the rest of the question? Let me, let me get you the name right now. <laughs> let me confirm. I'll confirm. <laughs> Daphne Anime Festival. And he what? claimed he was listening to your Q&A panel and that you were talking about the craziest autographs you ever gave and he, that the craziest autographs you ever gave were on uh, a condom and some kind of car. Is that true? That is accurate that I have signed the package <laughs> of a condom. <laughs> Wonderful to be talking about it. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Internet. I think at this point there are probably crazier things. I've now signed a, a diaper, a, a dirty diaper. What? A baby was He's in a diaper, and I think they actively wanted me to sign their baby, and I was like, that, that, no. That was, that was <laughs> I'll too sign far. the diaper. And they're like, oh, she just, that's okay. Uh, and then I've signed like a vintage Mustang, which hurt my soul. That's yeah, it was cool, painful. but also... It was, I was like, you don't really want... No, really, really, really don't. Please don't make me do this. <laughs> um, but yeah, the people are weird. I can tell. <laughs> what, what about you, Patrick? What's the craziest thing you've ever been asked? I've, I've, I've not signed a baby. No. I appreciate it. Good. Good for you. I've wanted people to come and be like, I'm not signing your baby. Yeah. <laughs> but no one's ever like called my bluff, so right. no baby signing. I feel like uh, I went to some con where like multiple people were like, sign my eyeglass case. And I was like, is this some weird regional it's thing? Because case? no one has ever asked me to sign an eyeglass case before. And at this particular signing, I've signed like five. And they've been spaced out. So it's not like a bunch of people are like, okay, here's the plan. We're going to go to sites. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I haven't signed a car. Uh, I feel like for me, it's always like the sign my laptop, sign my switch, sign my phone. Yes. Where I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure? I'm vandalizing your, your electronics. Sure? Like, yeah. yeah. But there is nothing weirder than signing some someone on their body and having them come to you later with a tattoo on their body. That is the weirdest for me. Whoa. And like the yeah. latest one that happened, I actually got it. Like he came by and he was like, I'm gonna go sign me. I'm gonna go over to that tattoo artist over there and get it get it tattooed. And I was like, well then I'm video. Yeah. So I, I did it. I like got it all on video and we put it in an extra feature. A special feature on a DVD. So I was like, <laughs> awesome. that's cool and weird. Does yeah. your ego go through the roof when that happens? Uh, do what? Does your ego go through the roof? My ego? Yeah. I, you know, my insecurity goes through the roof because I'm immediately like, oh, I don't, please don't regret this in 20 years. Like, <laughs> I have that, to live that's up to where I go. I immediately am like, you're going to, 10 years from now, you're going to be like, who is this again? Why is that back come on? I'm curious. Did that's, all that's left now is for somebody to come to you with the tattoo gun and be like, we're cutting out the middleman. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> well, I want to do that. <laughs> I kind of don't, but I kind of do a little bit. It's gonna happen. Just oh, no, not this no, weekend, but the it's gonna happen. Blood and the no, never. Oh, oh yeah, never, yeah, never. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not good. Yeah. Do, do you ever read fan critiques of Luffy and that kind of stuff, or do you um, try to avoid that? There's a certain amount of it that's unavoidable. I feel like if you're gonna engage with social media in any way, then you're gonna see some some um, critiques, some good and some bad. But I make it a mission of my life to not care. Uh, I don't. I. I care about being a good shepherd of the brand, so I want the character to, that I portray to represent the character as it's portrayed in Japan. I want the licensor to be happy. I want my director to be happy. I want my fellow castmates to feel like I'm something they can play off of and I them be happy. Um, and then anybody else who's watching being happy is like, great, I'm so glad you love it. But a critique is like, I get it. You like other things. You. You would prefer it to sound some other, another way. I totally understand. Good luck to you on the next one. <laughs> I mean, you, you kind of have to to keep your sanity because you can't you can't go through cherry pick. I mean, I feel like because now I'm old, and I'll watch like <laughs> the younger, the next crop come out, and like this thing and that thing and this thing and that thing. And they love me. They love me. They love me. They love me. I'm like, okay, but if you put all of your points in the yeah. they love me pot. Then you also have to take the lumps from like, oh, they hated it, they hated it, they hated it, they hated it. Yes. Like, at a certain point, you just have to be like, it's in the world. It's what it is. Not like a crass lip way, no. but just 
I'm not going to let how I feel about my work be held hostage by yeah. either side because it's not ultimately helping. There's a difference between caring if if people if fans enjoy your performance and caring because you think fans get to dictate how, if they enjoy you or not. Like you can't let it go too deep. It yeah. can't be about me. Yeah. It's about the character. <laughs> that that yeah. could be especially when you're in the new one, that could be a hard distinction. Yes. To, and I do see people get too invested and like get too excited if they win an award and it's like, yeah, but so and so put me on their list of top five and like uh, uh, the, uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because you're Dragon Ball Super co-star Sean was telling me last year about how uh, he doesn't care if fans tell him he's amazing. He still like critiques himself non-stop. He never thinks it's good enough. Like, do you feel the same way as a voice actor ever? Or? I mean, yeah. Once, if if you ever just say, well, well, did the thing. I'm gonna rest on my laurels and just bask in them. No, I mean that's yeah. you're not gonna do anything new at that point. You're not gonna. I mean, I, you, I feel like. Especially me having a little voice and yelling a lot, but like you get to, you get hired to play a lot of similar sort of archetypes over the course of your career. If you're lucky enough to have a career that spans over the amount of time, but you want to make sure you're always doing something as much as you can with whatever there's something new with it. I don't want to, I don't want somebody to be like, oh, there's that guy's just doing the same thing you did 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, like that. You know, even if it is that same archetype or same type of character, I would never want to. I want to keep doing this forever, but I want to keep earning the rights. To Yes, because you know that I mean? can get you pigeonholed so quickly. If you let somebody else's opinion of you and and whether your voice is good for one particular role uh, get you mired in the idea that that's the role that you play, then then you wouldn't have the drive to continue to try to play other things. And then as an actor, you're stagnated. That that doesn't sound fun. It's like doing the same theatrical play or musical forever. Yes. Like forever. Oh God, that sounds terrible. Yeah. No. 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 I'm actually curious on that note. How? How important do you feel your bass voice is as a voice actor? Right. Um, you know, to do characters. I mean, I've heard some. Like, I, I remember I met the cast of Sailor Moon, and one of them, she just her voice stands out no matter what, even when right. she's speaking regularly. She just sounds like that. Yeah. And uh, I'm curious, how, how important is that to become one? I think particularly with anime, but uh, that might be unfair. Maybe with all voice acting, it's really, really good to have the touchstone of what your voice, what your voice is. Um, and part of that is because when you come in for an audition, if you're putting on all of the different voices, then nobody gets to hear your real voice and use your real voice, which is kind of the most rewarding sort of character to play, is somebody that you completely connect with. Um, and part of it is just that if you lose track of, not everybody will feel this way, if you lose track of acting, like true acting, um, the ability to actually put yourself into a role and and feel realistic in that role, then the charactery characters that you play will also lose that three-dimensional aspect as well because it's very easy once you've been in this industry for a long time to put on a voice and just stay there where it's comfortable. Um, it would be very easy to put on Luffy's voice and like as long as I'm doing this crappy sounding voice, as long as I sound like this, it doesn't matter how my acting is because you hear the same voice. But if I if I still remember that I'm an actor, then it keeps me engaged rather than just kind of phoning it in. So I think it's pretty important. Yeah, well, I like that. I like that very much. That idea of like, hey, you have to have something solid and true that you're building all of the the tweaks and the affect on. Because if not, it's just this floating bit of part of this. Yeah, it's two dimensional. Like, what, what am I doing? What does it mean to you guys to have, you know, One Piece Stampede come out in theaters on the uh, 24th? And, you know, I mean, it's, it's a really big deal, so it's a theater release, you know? We're so excited! Stuff we do goes to theaters, yeah. and that's, that, I don't think that's ever going to not blow my mind. I know! <laughs> and I love to see videos of, like, people, people, fans will go into a theater that we're not able to go to and take a video of everybody reacting to something that's happening. It's like, ah, oh good, you felt that too, yeah. <laughs> It's so nice to get that kind of um, ability to, it's funny because we talked earlier about how you don't care that much about somebody completely complimenting you, but I do care that they're enjoying the movie. Yeah. I, I want I want that hype to happen where we're all hyping each other up. We get to 
we get to be on the same plateau with every uh, with all of the fans and uh, it's not disengaged the way it used to be back when we were just recording something and then it would go into the world and a year later we'd find out if people liked it this the age of social media has does have some benefits and one of those benefits <laughs> is that we get to see how fans are reacting to the stuff that we're putting out that's just exciting plus it's a great movie go see it it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel personally that websites like Behind the Voice Actor, Behind the Voice or whatever, um, have really helped you as your careers to, you know, people have really just, because they finally know the people behind the voices now. It's not just right. on IMDb anymore. A lot of people look it up. They see what other shows are involved in. I mean, that, that's so. true. There's a, it's nice for fans to have a, it's nice for fans to have a resource to go to to find out about uh, that. I, I, I feel like, it's great for fans to have, and it, it, it's good for us to not look. You don't look, really? No. Because <laughs> um, again, you can get too tied into like, what do they think? They like you, they don't like you. Know, you yeah. don't have your Sally feeling. Like, they like me, they really like me. Like, yeah, just do your thing. Right. Like, but that sounds like I don't like the website, and I refer people to that website. I think it's a great website. Uh, I just, I just think it's good, healthier for our mental state to not be too aware of what is happening there. Like, who's the most looked at this week? I don't even know it. It's tough online because I feel like credits can often be the wild west. Because this website will say it was this person, this website says it was that person, yeah, right. only read this one, this this one retracts it, but nobody <laughs> reads the retraction, and that one, like, right. they're sure that it's you, but then when you tell them it's not you, they're like, well, I wasn't sure. Like, it's, it's this this weird sort of wild west lack of vetting process, just generally speaking, yeah. as far as like IMDb, Wikipedia, I'll go on these and be like, was it me? How do you know? Yeah. Because I'm me and I didn't did like it it the the, the the segment of the fandom that wants to make itself like the self-appointed keeper of the credits flame, I feel like is a is a double edged sword. Yeah, I agree. Because it can be handy, but when people just sort of like, I'm sure because I know, like, well, but if you don't then you put it yeah. out there and Somebody put a credit on my Wikipedia page a long time ago, and I was like, "Oh, that's not me." And I had somebody take it down, and then it popped back up. Oh yeah. And it, they kept they kept putting it back up. I was like, I really feel bad for the person who was actually that role because it's <laughs> now the world <laughs> that cares thinks it's me. But you it feels, just eventually, I just started ignoring that stuff. It feels better when people because I've had uh, there's a character in League of Legends, Rango. Yeah. Everyone's like, "It's it's science, it's science." I'm like, "No, it's not." Like I'm always putting <laughs> up that fire. People will come to a convention and they're like. League of Legends, I'm like, yeah, I'm like three characters, like, but I really love Rengar, and here's this picture, and I'm like, and that's the one that I'm not. Thank you, internet. <laughs> no. I'm so sorry you got that <laughs> yeah, poster. <right. laughs> still me to sign it, I can doodle my character, and sometimes they're like, yeah, and other times they're like, no. Aww. I'm like, I didn't. I didn't. Sorry. <laughs> but, but I, those sites are great for fans, and... It's a great gathering place for people to be able to come together and talk about the, the characters and the actors that they really like and discover new ones. Uh, if you like this char this actor, then you'll like these shows that they're in, or yeah, sort of uh, if you like this actor, then you'll like this actor who sounds a lot like that actor. I, I like all that stuff. I think that's that's a great thing for other people to look at. Do you have any rituals or superstitions that, you know, as voice actors you've done from the beginning? Like when you go into playing in One Piece, like Luffy and all that, do you have something that you can't go into a session without doing first? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's real dumb. <laughs> um, it makes the direct directors laugh every time, but I can't get into Luby's voice without going, la la la. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a reference for Luffy anymore. Like, they don't have to play any Luffy for me anymore. <laughs> I have to go, la la la. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> I like that. I wish I had some, like, I mean, for, uh, a lot of times when I play Frankie, I would uh, go to the vending machine and get, like, get my Cheez-Its, because it would be, like, full day, so get my Cheez-Its, get my Coke, because cola, I'm like, okay, new character, cool. I've got, I've got some calories, I've got some caffeine, I'm ready to be very loud. Yeah, that sounds like Frankie. <laughs> you don't do that, I'm guessing? No, la, 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 <laughs> No, but... Yes. Let's make that your reference line. Frankie's going to be like, wow, like, yeah, pull one of those. Yeah, That could be my... That's not a bad idea. But see, if I do now, they're going to be like, you're just copying. No. <laughs> <laughs> it works, works. Do you have any techniques for protecting your voices? For Don't talking? do what we do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible idea. Don't ever do what we do. 
just in the, Cook and I were just talking about this, we are not good caretakers of our instruments. Um, I drink soda, I don't drink that much water at all. Um, the one thing you're not supposed to do when you go into a recording session, right, is drink milk. Have anything milk related because it, it, it makes phlegm. Whenever I go into a recording session for Luffy, I get a big latte. <laughs> because, and this is my messed up brain, because in my brain, if I make my throat mucusy, then when I'm shredding my throat, first it has a layer of layer. mucus. No, that makes sense. To shred. No, that's that's perfectly valid. Right? That's yeah. science. So yeah, exactly. I give myself some mucus to shred before it gets to the throat. throat. No, I, I, that's that's smart. Good because I really genuinely believe <laughs> that. Like I deep down believe that. That's not even a joke. So I mean, we pretty much do everything reverse of what you're supposed to. <laughs> don't. You do healthy things. Go take voice classes. Learn to support from the diaphragm. It's don't all BS, isn't it? Like Luffy and Mom Frankie. Is, don't let your babies grow up to be. No. Gross. It's a terrible plan. Voice actors. I mean, I feel like a lot of it is just the thing that you run into that, that fans don't always realize, and sometimes directors don't always realize that's... <laughs> A fun moment is that just because we can do this doesn't mean we're robots. It just means we've got the experience to where we can yell and yell and yell and yell and yell and we'll have a longer operative window to yell. But at the end of that window, it's still like, okay, voice is shy. I lost yeah. my voice. I can't do anymore. It's not just this, like, we can go for it. Yeah, yeah it's thing. not dig down. Okay, you gotta really try. No, literally, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, for me, it's a lot of like, oh, hey, like, when I went in for Kill I Kill the first time, after my first session, I walked out, I made a beeline for the scheduling office, and I'm like, I'm never doing four hours again. We're doing two hour sessions, <laughs> right. we're going to schedule them strategically. Yes. It's, a lot of it is just knowing how much you can do safely, being like, okay, that's a fight character on Tuesday morning, so definitely not doing Call of Duty on Monday night. I'll do Call of Duty on Friday night, and then I've got the weekend uh, to recover. That is the benefit of working at the studio. I'm a, a producer at the studio, and that's so it's very, it's nice that I'm up there all the time because I can do the one hour sessions once a, once a day yeah, yeah, yeah. for like a full week and that's five hours rather than like, okay, if I, if I have to go to the studio then I want to get it all done in one time, I don't have to do that, which is nice. You that's both true. worked as ADR directors, right? Yeah. Am I correct on that? And no, how, how does that how does that feel? Uh, do you like that kind of aspect of the job? Do you, do you sometimes think you'd rather you know, transition that instead of voice acting in any way? I would never give up voice acting. Same. I like, I like getting to do all the all things. The things. <laughs> all the things. We're creative people-ish uh, for me. <laughs> um, and I, I get bored with one thing, with one task. That's why I started directing and then why I started writing and then why I started producing. All the jobs. Give me all the jobs. Um, but I would never give up voice acting for any of the other jobs. That's definitely my, my favorite. Um, and directing, I only thoroughly enjoy directing if I thoroughly enjoy the show. So like with My Hero Academia, which is the only show I direct anymore, I love it. I love directing. Can't wait for the season to start again. I am sad when it's gone. I want to talk about it all the time. That did not, that wasn't always the case. Yeah, I've sort of gotten to the point where if if I can't write my own scripts on a thing and if the show doesn't mean something to me, it's a hard sell just because directing, I mean, it's like it's like being in a stage play. You, you know, whether it's a good show, bad show, mediocre show, or whatever it is, it's still a lot of time and energy. So I'm thinking to myself, if I'm already going to put all of that time and energy into a thing, I want it to be a thing that I really love yeah. and have enough, you know, skin in the game that I can make the sort of call as a guy. Like, Okay, I know I have some say in casting, I read the scripts, I know there's gonna be good stuff coming from upstream because it's my own stuff coming from upstream. You know, it's yeah. You want you you get to the point where it doesn't feel divish to want to sort of curate the experience if you're putting all that energy into. That's because he's a, a better yeah. like he's he is respected in the industry, and so as a contractor working in this industry, the ability to pick and choose what you do is a very good marker for how well respected you are. Because if you can say no to a thing, it means you know something else is coming for you. And, and that's it's... because people love you and love working with you. And it could all change tomorrow. Like, I'm never one to burn bridges. Oh, like, I will no, never. Like, like that well. wheel of fortune turns, and you're like, I will I will take these. What is the job? Yes, I will take them. You know what I mean? But you... Porn? Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> it's called the, the first show I ever directed and adapted was a uh, hair and but I was so new to anime that I didn't even know about the tropes. I'm like, 
don't know, there's this kid who's kind of a sad sack, but like every girl in town just loves him. It's, cool. <laughs> it's really it's never it's happened like, before. The, the damnest thing. I don't know what that's about, but hey, let's let's see what they're gonna do with it. No idea what hair game it was. <laughs> I'm like they're going to they're going to the other. It's going, all new. They're going to a hot spring. Well, that's high concept. <laughs> the whole episode. What the heck? I have learned. <laughs> Yeah, how do you feel about those similar settings, by the way, in a lot of animes, like the beach everybody episode. in high school? Yeah, yeah. yeah, there are some things that you're never going to get away with. The, the parents that are inexplicably not in the picture, like it's not like they're dead, they're just not there. Yeah. And this high school kid is living in an apartment on his own. Sure. 5,000 square foot apartment. Yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Little things like that, there's always a beach episode, <laughs> or a, a hot springs episode, and no teacher around to be like, maybe we shouldn't allow this. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe these hijinks aren't the best thing for the students. Here's something I've always wondered about, what the voice actors really think about this. I'm sure you've heard people, even if you don't read social media or whatever, I'm sure you've heard people say like, oh no, I'll only watch the subtitled one, I don't want to hear the, mm -hmm. the, the English the dub, the dub, dub's terrible, whatever. How do you feel about that, that some people just won't even give you a chance? Or... Most of us, and I, I feel like, I, I'm, I'm guessing you are the same way, I'm gonna guess, uh, don't care. Like, I don't, I, if you are a sub fan and you hate dubs, 100% go do your own thing, watch the subs. That's why the subs are there. And we have fantastic translators who make our subtitles amazing. And I, want, I completely understand the desire to watch that because that is, it's in the original language. Uh, you get to read exactly what the translated version is, so you know exactly what they're saying. I, I completely get that. And then I I understand if you don't want to watch subtitles because you don't want to read. That's not how you want your experience to go. You want to absorb it in a different way, and that's what dubs are for. And we do great dubs. Um, and then there are those beautiful, magnificent people in the middle who can do both and just pick it based on which one they like better for the show. Um, but I don't care. I mean, that's, when I'm watching stuff, that's how I am. Some stuff I want to watch dubbed, some yeah. stuff I want to watch so I just, you know, case by case basis. Yeah. I, I, but it's cool because you can either, you know, watching the original Japanese, and that is straight up the OG experience, if you speak Japanese, or you can get the subtitles, which usually hew a little closer to that translation, yeah. or you can have the dub, which depending on the particulars of the dub, does whatever it does. So you've got really three different choices at your disposal as far as how you want to watch a thing. So. It would be great if there wasn't so much rancor around this, the subject, like there has to be a lot of argument of which is better, um, but at, after a certain point I just started laughing at that. <laughs> I've heard that a certain script from One Piece made you cry. Is that a something that happens a lot? One piece of yeah. Cry. <laughs> really? what's, what's the one that the you can one, point to the that part was? Part that I cried at. Or you were just sobbing. Was sobbing gently, I guess. The Going Mary <laughs> yeah. is the point that made me cry the most. Um, that I don't. I don't know if it hit, hit you. I, there are. There is a. I don't want to give spoilers. There is a point that every fan assumes made me cry the most, and that point is not the point. For me, it was the Going Mary. Um, and the Usopp Luffy fight got me. Robin backstory, Nami backstory, Chopper backstory, those big moments really got me more than the one thing that I think gets most fans. Is it watching the episodes themselves or do you not watch? Is it just uh, the script? I watch it as I oh, I watch it watching. for the first time as we record it, because that's way better for me as an actor. As a director, I want to know everything. I read the manga, I want to be completely prepared. As an actor, I want to be surprised by every moment um, so that I can react to it in real time. So no, I didn't. I, I only see it when I'm in the booth. Now, fans, you guys spoil it for me a lot, <laughs> which is fine. Those fans. Those fans. <laughs> I didn't have an opportunity to find out about Ace firsthand. I had been oh, hearing no. about that for years, years. <laughs> Um, maybe that's why it didn't affect me the way that it affected other people. Like, it was a beautiful moment, but in recording it, I already knew it was happening. <laughs> Going Mary, I didn't know. And I was like, ah! <laughs> I felt like a monster because when Frank came he's like, what's the ship? I'm going to tear it up. He starts like tearing chunks off. And I'm like, no, you can't. It's, oh, I feel conflicted. Yeah, don't do that. I mean, I know you're going to build another one, but don't do that. What about you, Patrick? Has an, has an episode ever made you uh, what was the tear up? What called? It had some like, whimsical German name. It did. Um, it was like the Shippen Ghosted. No, it, was, <laughs> it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't something that on the nose, but it was 
the, you, you, oh no, it's gonna bother me. Right, it ship ghost. Um, I mean, I, 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 One Piece does a really good job of backstories okay. and making you feel those backstories. So I think for me, it was the Robin stuff and also the Frankie stuff. Just seeing, you know, the stuff of, you know, Tom shipwright being so nice to him and taking him in and then trying to save Tom and Aww. get him by the train, doing that whole thing, like. That was your. That was my. That was your thing. And again, just experiencing it for the first time in the yeah. booth, not, not knowing. Laboon! Oh my gosh! Laboon. Oh my God, Laboon! Laboon! Oh. One of my favorite moments, actually. So both good. both times, my one of my favorites. Do you, do you actually play the games as well? Since you said getting fully immersed or not? No, I don't go. allow. We don't in my house. We don't allow ourselves to have systems. I keep it straight first. I'm sorry. Oh, oh. Um, if I had a game system, that's all my husband and I would do, and we try not to do that. Um, but no, I like to hear other people playing the game. I played the one that came out on the Wii yeah. that we dug. You know, that's the, where I first got to be funky because those characters were coming out of the game hadn't hit yet in the dub. And so I think I got cast like five years ahead of where the show was. Such a funny experience. <laughs> and you went in and did like four hours of Frankie and then waited half a decade. And you still knew it was coming. Well, I did, but at first I would bug Mike and be like, hey, Mike, it's time. He's like, not yet, bud. I'm like, how about now? He's like, nope, not yet, bud. And after a while, Five more years. Yeah, right. After a while, I realized, like, oh, this is going to be like geological time, not like <laughs> a month from now. Uh, and then when it finally came up, I didn't want to assume, like, do I still get to be right oh. He's like, yeah, bud. I'm like, okay, cool. Because you don't want to resume. Five years is a long time. Yeah, right. be like, changed our mind. Um, but that game was super fun. So every time there's another One Piece game announced, I'm like, get it, get it, dip. No, no. But I mean, I guess in, a, in, in sort of this left-handed compliment way, it's a testament to the popularity of the franchise. But they know they can put out these these games based on franchises, and they know, like, hey, even if we don't dub it, people's enjoyment of it isn't based on there being a dub. It's based on them loving the show, loving the characters. Doesn't that worry so you though, on an individual level, that you're like, oh, people will buy it anyway? <laughs> kind of, no, right? I mean, yeah. if it's also a speed thing. Like, it takes a lo- it takes a long time to dub a, sh- a, a game. And people want the game to come out as quickly as it does in Japan, so it, it just, in order to get it out faster, sometimes they'll skip the dubbing process. It's expensive and it's slow. With one yes. piece, you're like, okay, we need 800 people uh, to appear over 500 right. episodes. Like, that's. Yeah, that's a lot of money to invest in when, when you don't know if that's what people are buying it for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you record together in the studio? Or no. Or, ne- never? Never. Never ever? Never ever. The only oh. things that are recorded together in uh, the studio at Funimation, anyway, are uh, Walla sessions, which is like in the background market chatter. Sometimes you'll get a group of people together to go, yay! And uh, that's it. That doesn't affect you to not kind of have that. That's thing. where you t- trust your director. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes you, def- I mean, sometimes you get to be the last one in, so you can play off everyone else, and you know, as you're doing the thing organically, like, okay, that sounds like a proper response to whatever they said. And sometimes you're the first one in, and at that point you really have to trust that your director no. has some blueprint of how they want this conversation to yeah. work. So even though you're sort of just like taking a leap of faith with your reads, they can be like, okay, a little more of this, a little less that, because I know that blah, 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 before you were blah, 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 after you. <laughs> and then it's it's the weirdest damn thing to see those conversations come together at the end. Yeah. You're like, it sounds like they're talking to each other. Yeah. Like, this was in no way an organic process. When you shuffle the cards, you're like, oh. It's a deck again. Here we go. And yes, it does affect you. Like you always want to be the last person in to record. That's great because then you, everybody else is in. You're responding organically to other people. Um, but I also understand why it's not possible. It's impossible to get two people in the booth and then hope that they're both going to hit it right on the same take um, with timing. That's just never going to happen. You know, somebody will start over the top of somebody else, and then that will take as blown because you can't move those lines around to make them fit. So. It just, for timing purposes, it makes complete sense to record one. My last question, what's been your favorite role to play? It doesn't necessarily have to be one piece, it could be anything. It's Luffy. It's Luffy? Yeah. No matter what? <laughs> <laughs> There's not a doubt. Uh, I, can't, I can't pick one, but Frankie's definitely up there. Rumor from Monsters up there. Gosh, I'll scream for World of Warcraft. I, mean, I, I do a lot of like character yeah. kind of stuff, which is fun because even though they're not always the hero and they're not, you know, if it's a, like a JRPG or something, they're not the character that has like 50 hours of recording. Maybe they have six hours of recording, but it's a really fun six hours because they're a really interesting character for whatever, whatever, you know, villainous or oddball reason they're doing the thing. So, 
Yeah, I know. It's a lot. It's hard to pick. Frankie's up there. I think about it sometimes. Like, I don't think I would ever get a tattoo of a character because I'm too indecisive. But if I ever did get a tattoo of a character, it would be Frankie. <laughs> That's a good metric. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna, but if I did... Yeah, if I ever got it, I'm not gonna. But, but if, if I, I did, did, it would be this, a straw hat. It would be his, his little uh, crossbones straw hat. Jolly Roger thing. Yeah. Uh, but Luffy, I've been with him for so long. He's the one that I know the best. He is always fun. He never lets me down. The second I step in the booth, I'm happy to be recording. Luffy, for sure. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Guess yeah. who's back? Hey, what's up? <laughs> Luffy, I'll get you. 